Welcome to Molly Cole Creations. This is Amanda. All right, DIY Let's get started. number one. And these are not coming out in any special or particular order. And they were all kind of done in a mismatched effort while I waited for things to dry. I'm starting out with this little, I guess, birdhouse or wooden house from the Dollar Tree. I painted it yellow and I cut some honeycomb decals out on my Cricut. I had originally planned to leave this little house yellow. I do, in the end, uh, change that up. But I have to show you these cutest, so adorable little bees. I got this big pack from Amazon super inexpensive I think I want to say they were like five or six dollars maybe they do have little adhesive on them that you just peel off I um, do hot glue most of them that I use because I want them to stay put and then these are also from Amazon they are little honey drippers wooden honey drippers and we do a DIY with those as well. But I just want to show you those two things. I will link them below and you can see how inexpensive they are. So that is the decal that I used. I only went over the top part of the roof. You could go onto that second tier of the roof as well, but I didn't. And then I'm just taking some twine and going around that little hole, like the little bird's nest. Now, I know this isn't necessarily for bees, but I feel like bees and birds kind of all go together. So I thought this would just be a really cute element. And then I take out my Waverly wax it's called it's a paint but I do mix it up with water and use it as a stain it's not actually stain I just like the color of it and it goes on nicely and it dries quickly so I'm repainting this or just going over it I don't give it like a bunch of coats I still want the yellow to show through I just want to give it kind of that stained rustic look and then I peel off those decals to show the little hive or honeycomb design. And then I glue those little beads on and this DIY is a complete. Moving on, DIY number two. We are gonna make a little rolling pin. This started out as white. I don't have me filming that or starting it for some reason but I give it a good couple of coats of the yellow same yellow that I use in this entire project and it is a DIY paint in the color cake batter this is a dowel that I cut I think during the winter to make rolling pins out of so it's just a dowel I cut into pieces and I use those little cup holders from Hobby Lobby. I did position this all the way to the right. My little decal that I also cut on my Cricut. It says honeybee. And that is so I can put some ribbon on it after. And then I just am using, again, the same Waverly Wax color to put on these little end caps for my faux rolling pin that I just end up gluing to the ends. You can get rolling pins from Hobby Lobby as well. I just used what I had. This is just one of those little terracotta pots. We are on to... DIY number three and I had used it for a different project at one point that is why it is painted white but that is absolutely not necessary for this because we are going to make a beehive out of it I am covering it with hot glue and this thicker twine that I have and it worked perfectly 
I just kind of go round and round and round till I get to the top and I'm using my finger protector so I don't burn myself and I put a little bit on the top extra just to make it look a little more cone shaped I guess you could say and make it look a little more beehive ish so now I have seen a lot of people make these of course what's a bee tear tray without one right and I have seen people use felt to make the little opening or um, paper I have seen fabric I have seen all kinds of things I use a marker a sharpie in fact just to keep it really simple and really rustic but you could definitely glue some felt on there trace it around with some more of that twine I've seen it done all kinds of ways and then I'm just gluing some of these a cute little wooden beads from Amazon on here as well and this it turns out super cute super easy super inexpensive now moving on to DIY number four this is one of those little tiny mini cutting boards uh, I guess that they call them from Hobby Lobby this one was from Christmas as you saw it said ho 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 I am taking some really beautiful scrapbook paper I'm not even sure the brand I'd have to pull it out and look at it I will link it uh, with these bees on it it also has some kind of shimmer and shine to it I'm pulling out my liquid patina which is by DIY just like Mod Podge or even a glue stick would work uh, on this I just this is what was handy so that's what I'm using so I traced it out cut out the right size and stuck it on there and I'm just gonna get some thinner twine and make a little bow for it before that before I do that I do let this dry and get rid of those those edges because I couldn't cut it absolutely perfectly of course so I just want to have it a really tailored edge and I'm just using that little finger sander that I got from Timu however it has been out of stock since I've been trying to find them for some friends and some for other people that have asked about them but I they have been out of stock ever since but anyhow that's what we do and then I have my two little beads that I attached didn't paint those I just kept them the natural wood bead color that they came in they're a smaller size they are probably the the midsize and one of these little laser cut bees and I'm giving it a really light brushing or a little light sponging of this same yellow paint I don't give it a thick heavy coat I want those laser cuts to show through and then I just kind of decide where I want to place it and that is all for that one DIY number five we are pulling back out our honey dippers and I've seen this done a million times as well I've seen people people use like hot glue that is colored like colored hot glue sticks I've seen people use makeup I have seen people use paint I am just using regular hot glue because that's what I had I'm just kind of dripping it along setting it on wax paper to kind of let it harden and I am using this paint from folk art I wouldn't say it's the exact color of honey definitely not but to me it was close enough and I thought it looked really cute so I'm just using a sponge I use my finger a little bit just to get that all on there make it look like it it's dripping in honey and this one I set down flat so that it would stand up in the tear tray if I wanted it to 
and I use the same paint on it. You could paint these yellow, you could paint them the handles black, you could do whatever you wanted with these handles. I choose just to go in with that same Waverly Wax color that we have been using throughout this video. And I think they turned out super cute. I do glue a few of those little beads to it as well. Moving on, this is our tag for our bead garland. You Again, you certainly can't have any type of tear tray without a bead garland, right? So I'm taking five of the large beads, mixing some water in with our Waverly Wax Stain, and I'm going to coat them with that. And then I'm going to take five just regular beads unstained unpainted just the natural weed the natural bead color and i have my little tag there that i engraved in the honeycomb i did that with my laser machine and then i glued one of those laser cut bees on it as well same as we did with that other tag and then I'm pulling our beads out and just kind of uh, smoothing out that while they dry. And then I'm just going to string everything up and make a tassel. Super simple. And I just tie a knot there. I get some uh, painter's tape on here to help me feed it through. And I just do one after the other, rotating. So 10 beads in total, and then I just wrap that twine around my hand a bunch of times. I think I typically do about 20 times, and you end up with a tassel. And once you got that, you use those ends of the garland there to tie off your tassel and get rid of that blue tape because that's not cute and then you cut those rings and there you have it I'm tying around that to keep it all straight and then I give it just a bit of a haircut or a bit of a trim just to have all those pieces about even but that is simple and easy and beautiful and then I'm adding a little bee to it of course all right DIY number seven we are taking one of these wooden crates from the Dollar Tree and just peeling off that tag using the DIY paint in cake batter once again as I do throughout this entire video I'm painting the top of it and I'm painting the sides and I'm leaving the middle in this natural unfinished wood. So I get a smaller paintbrush so I can get these little areas here. And we are making a kind of a faux book stack. These are nice because they do fit in tier trays where regular books probably wouldn't. Um, so this is just kind of a nice trick and again it kind of goes along standard with any type of tiered tray I love me a good tiered tray for every season I will have one year round whether it is holiday themed just seasonal whatever the case may be I always have something in my tiered trays and it's just something I really enjoy. So I hope you guys do too. I cut some more decals on the Cricut and just says, I think it says a farm fresh or fresh honey. I don't even remember what I typed out. Um, but I am just weeding that using black vinyl and use just kind of a farmhouse font I will link the font below if you're interested I did measure it out just to make sure 
that it, each word would fit on each row. And then I kind of play around, do I want to right disposition it, middle it, or left disposition? I do end up going on to the right and easy to line up that way also. And I'm just it's grabbing that same transfer tape that I used before. No need to use a fresh piece. These are all simple, easy transfers. So I get the honey put down first. And as I said, this is really easy to line up because I am just putting everything to that side. And then after I get the lettering and the decals applied, and then I pull out just, I pulled out a few different ribbons to choose from. One was just kind of a black sheer. This buffalo check is the one that I went with. And I just kind of wrapped it around. Tied a really, really simple bow. And trimmed it up. It looks super cute. And I played around with adding some like greenery and florals to it. Totally optional. Pulled out some sunflowers even. And tried to see if I liked that. Um, in the very end, I choose to go with no floral or greenery. This is for a craft class, so I didn't want to make it too complicated or have too many options for people to choose from. I certainly don't want to have to bring an entire bag of greenery for everyone to pick through. DIY number eight, I think we're on. These are some additional little honey dippers that I did cut in my home and using MDF. These, all these DIYs are part of the kit, so they're all going to be kind of combined. This was a little mason jar that I cut and I had to like fool around with different paint options. I wasn't sure how I wanted everything to go together. I didn't have a, a grand plan. This was something I was kind of doing on the fly. So I do play around with it quite a bit. The mason jar has a front and a back and I cut the words sweet life and a couple of bees to go along with it. I am using a paint marker to get this bee traced out. It does have very thin cuts. You could paint it, but I just chose to use a paint marker just to keep it simple. And the same thing with this Sweet Life. This is fairly small wording, small lettering. And so the paint marker worked like a charm. And I am using a, I believe it's folk art. I want to say it was called Steel Gray, but I'm not positive. I will link the color that I used below. And I just went around trying to give it a little bit more definition and detail, making it look a little bit more like maybe a mason jar or I don't know just a, a bug catching jar but I did incorporate the yellow and the bee and the sweet life and then the little house I had originally painted yellow and then I cut this other design with the word love with a little bee as the O and this one I went back and forth on what do I want to do? What color do I want to use? You can see I originally painted that black. I painted the outline of the house with the Waverly Wax and the main part of the house with the yellow paint. Well, I didn't like it. I thought it looked just kind of, I don't know. I, I needed more. 
So I am rethinking things. I paint the little outline in black. And then I see how I like that. I also choose to paint the little jar background in black as well. Now I have committed because I am applying glue. Well, not really, because I still am just not loving it. So I pulled it off quickly before the glue dried. And I am going through scrapbook paper after scrapbook paper. I even trimmed some out. I could have cut all this out, but I just kind of wanted to see or to show you all. Like, I think everyone's brains do this, especially when we're crafting. We have a lot of options, a lot of ideas swimming around, and some work. And this one probably would have been just as cute as what I ended up going with. But then I decided I wanted a buffalo check pattern. I did not have any scrapbook paper in that pattern, but I did have some vinyl. So I traced that out. Looking back, I should have used my Cricut to cut this shape. It would have been a lot smoother and I wouldn't have had to trim so much. But anyways, I didn't do that. And it worked fine. It, I just had to cut around the edge and, and all that jazz. And then I didn't like the, the lettering was black. So after I get the little house in order, I do end up repainting the love, as you can see there. It did take a few coats, two, maybe three, to cover up that black. But we are finishing up our Sweet Life jar, and I love how this one turned out. It's so cute, so simple. And I set this on the very top of my tear tray. I do use a couple of mini wooden easels that I can show you. They do come with the kits. I use them often to prop up items in a tear tray because a lot of tear trays, they have kind of a lip. And so some of the designs get lost. So here we are with our little house and a super fun not fun i broke my little wood piece here when i was painting it and this paint is still a little bit wet i don't know if um i have told you diy paint dries down so it looks a little bit different when it's wet anyhow I think it'll be fine once I glue it all on. This is our super cute jar, all finished and complete and dry with the bee and the sweet life glued on. These are our wood honey dippers that we created. I did tie and will tie a little bit of twine around the other one and glue one of our cute little wooden beads on top of it and i just wrap the twine around and tie a quick bow and use the hot glue to get the little bee on then the last thing that i do is a glue this love on and try to repair the little break that i put in it and as you can see, you can't even tell that I broke it. So that was basically DIYs 8, 9, and 10 all in one clip. But here is everything all laid out. I am absolutely in love with all of it. Such a beautiful, sunny, happy mixture of colors and designs. And you can't go wrong with Buffalo Chuck. So I'm happy with how the little house turned out, which is the one that I struggled with the most. But here I just pull out the tear tray. I did um, stick in a few greenery pieces. And of course, I play around with this 
a hundred times. I put things here, there, everywhere, move them around once again. That's one of the little wooden easels that I was telling you about. I do send a couple of those in each kit because as I said, it helps elevate certain elements in your tier trays to pull them up over that lip. If your tear tray doesn't have a lip, then you don't have to worry about it. But mine does. So that's where I put my little Sweet Life jar. I did put the book stack down on the bottom. That was a no-brainer because that's the only place it would fit. And then I just kind of move everything around. Like I said, I adjust and change things and move things around. I also don't want things toppling over constantly and tipping over. So I want to make sure everything is secure. But this is where I ended up. And y'all, I love it. This has been so much fun. I can't wait to share it with y'all and with my craft class and to display this in my home. This goes for spring and summer. I'll probably change it up at some point, but for now, I love it. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being my crafting friends. I hope you enjoyed this video and these 10 DIYs. And we'll see you all next time.